What's going on, everyone? So I really like the Lakers draft. They got the guy in the first round at 17. That is a impact, ready to play now type prospect. He's a guy that I do believe could potentially be in the rotation. Obviously depends on how the roster shapes up. But even if the Lakers make a big splash, he's a guy that definitely would more likely not be in the kind of the top eight. Uh, and then uh, if the Lakers end up trading for like a key role guy or something, I still think you're probably losing somebody in which he could kind of step in, uh, maybe even two pieces. So I thought the Lakers did a great job with getting Dalton Connect in the first round at 17. Fast forward to the second round. We all knew it was going to be Bron. Now, I'm seeing a lot of mixed reactions. A lot of people are excited for the pick and understand the situation. A lot of other people are down on this pick and saying, you know, it's this, that, and the other, right? At 55, again, who's better? Like, who are you drafting that is that much better? Like, I see people that are like, oh, you know, they should have drafted somebody that could help now. Who? Or I see people that are like, oh, Bronny's just going to be a G League guy. He's the 55th pick in the draft where there was only 58. Like, yeah, anybody the Lakers draft. Like, who would have the Lakers drafted that would have came in and immediately made an impact? Likely nobody, right? I mean, you could say and argue, like, you never know, right? Like, look at Draymond, look at Jokic. More likely than not, whoever the Lakers drafted at 55 is playing in the G League and is going to be a development guy for a few years. Bronny, I'm fine. People also forget Bronny was a top, you know, a five-star prospect. And was like the twentieth in twentieth recruit in the draft or in uh, in his year, right? Like so, it's not like they, he was a guy that was just always projected to be trash. Like no, he was a guy that was looked at as like he could be one of the top guys uh, in his draft class. And then he had the health scares and stuff like that. So I'm all for uh, the the drafting of the Brawny. We'll see what he becomes. I'm willing to give him a chance. If he ends up becoming a bust, then he becomes a bust. 55th picks become bust more times than not. Like, can you list 10 55th picks that have been great? List five 55th picks that have been great. And, and uh, you can list on one hand the number of second round picks, period, that have been great. Right? So, again, it, I'm fine with that pick. 17th pick, super stoked on. Well... Then, after the draft, you get the undrafted guys, right? What about the undrafted guys? Well, the Lakers got two undrafted guys in this uh, draft, or not uh, end of draft, right? They got Blake Henson, and then they also got uh, Armel uh, Treor. So, Armel Treor and then Blake Henson are the two guys that the Lakers brought in. Both are sizable, lengthy wings. They're both guys that could play out on the perimeter, right? Two-way guys are perceived to be potential two-way guys. I like both of these picks, but let's start with Armel Treo. Uh, so, Armel, again, is a guy that he played, uh, he, well, he was born in France, and he averaged 10.8 points, 7.3 rebounds, 1.5 assists. Uh, he's a big upside guy. He's 21 years old. Still plenty of room for growth there. Six foot nine. Um, he also has like, I think it's a 7'2 wingspan. So he's long, he's lengthy, he's versatile, twitchy type of athletic wing. Uh, he's got good athleticism, good uh, just vert stuff. He's a guy that definitely is going to be a project. He's a guy that you're going to have to develop. More likely than not, he's not a guy in the next year or two that's going to come in and all of a sudden be this, like, just A-plus uh, player. You also never know, like I said, I mean, look at Austin Reeves, goes undrafted, and now is a key part of the Lakers and is a very good player, right? I know a lot of people are disappointed in Austin Reeves. I'm a bit disappointed in Austin Reeves, but he was still good, right? He still gave you, if he just shot better, he would have been a 20-point a game guy, right? Neither here nor there. Um, but I think the Lakers are clearly trying to, they're looking at it as, okay, we got gu flushed with guards, which is also something else. Like Lakers are probably going to have to try to, you know, clear a log jam or something at some point. Jalen Huchifino, is he end up getting traded, uh, to kind of help with Bronny possibly, maybe. Um, but now you also got connect, you got Maxwell Lewis, uh, you got Max Christie, Austin Reeves. You got a lot of guys like in that guard position. Um, some could help now. Some are more long-term prospects, right? Uh, but nonetheless, you kind of got this little bit of logjam. You need to start bringing in and, and kind of running those sizable wings that can play both forward spots. Right? You need to get those sizable forwards that can come in and have an impact, uh, hopefully, on both sides of the basketball, right? Because that's something that the Lakers really need is two-way guys, right? 
And I do think Armel is a guy that can be a legit two-way guy at some point. Again, he's definitely a project, needs some work. Um, but he's a guy that can play either forward spot, defend either forward spot with his size and with his length, and can be a little overwhelming. Um, I like that. I like that a lot. And then Blake Henson, uh, he's the guy that a lot of people are excited for because he is the sharpshooter. He is the guy that um, can basically shoot from anywhere on the basketball court. Um, he was looked at as one of the better uh, shooters in this draft. Um, he was on Pittsburgh last year, uh, and he is older, though. He's 24 years old. Um, kind of reminds me of, like, that, like, you know, the uh, the the two-guard, you know, like a, a swider type guy or, you know, like, um, I'm blanking on his name, but uh, Demoy Hodge. There we go. That's the name I was trying to find. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Demoy Hodge, right? But at 6'8", right? He has good athleticism. He's not like some crazy hyper athlete, right? He's 24 years old. He went undrafted for reasons. He's not without his ailments. He's probably closer to his ceiling than he is his floor, but he's 6'8". So to me, he kind of reminds me of like Demoy Hodge if Demoy Hodge was 6'8", right? Like he can defend a little bit, right? Can stay in front of a guy, good leg, good size, physical, right? Got a good, good stocky body. Um, he's a guy that I do think could potentially kind of fill that void, right? Because Demoy Hodge was the guy we were all hoping like could be the next KCP, right? He was like, man, very similar. He, he even talked about how he modeled his game after him, was like a legit three-point shooter, but also, um, you know, could defend. But then the Lakers just, you know, you got Max Christie, you got Austin Reeves, you got all these guys where it's like, is Demoy ever going to get an actual roster spot, right? Well, I think that with Blake, I think he's a guy that come in and immediately... Not, or not immediately, but he's a guy that come in eventually, immediately be developed and be kind of under the Lakers banner and which they're trying to do. Lakers obviously want to win now, but they also need this young talent that they can grow and develop and kind of keep in their farm system. Problem with the 24-year-old is, you know, how you, you're limited on how long you can have him grow and develop. Eventually, it's like, okay, you're going to need to you're going to have to end up either cutting him or play him, one of the two, right? Because, you know, if you give it three years, he's 27. He's basically in the prime of his career where, you know, you get somebody that's 21, you know, like Armel, he's 21. You could give it two, three years to, to kind of grow and develop. And now he's at the age of like, you know, like Reeves and, you know, Connect and uh, Blake and stuff. So, again, I, I like both of these uh, two-way fridge. I don't think either of these guys are like this huge, like, oh my God, I can't believe we got the guy. Like, Colin, like when we got Colin Castleton, I was pumped. Like, I was like, oh no, he's a guy that could be a real piece. I like these guys. I think that they have potential, but I think that they're both kind of development guys. I'm more hyped about the Armel guy. I think he is the guy that he, he's young enough to wear and he's got the good size, good length. I think he... Also, these foreign players really, you know, are, are good at just kind of having multiple skill sets. He's another one of those guys. He's one of the guys that I think could potentially, eventually, again, probably not this year, um, but in a year or two, you know, potentially be an actual roster piece and maybe crack his way into the rotation. Uh, I really like the idea of him. Um, I know a lot of people... Kind of in closing, I know a lot of people really wanted the Lakers to go and get a, a big man in in undrafted. I'm not really sold on any of these big men that are left. You know, I mean, maybe there's a couple they could take a flyer on. You got Colin Castleton, right? At what point do you just buy into Colin Castleton? And that kind of what this feels like to me. Kind of feels like this is the Lakers buying into Colin Castleton. I'm not saying that Colin Castleton is going to be the backup for the Lakers this year, but this kind of feels like Colin Castleton has improved. The Lakers are willing to give him an opportunity and a shot to see, like, okay, are you are you ready to take the leap? And then if he is, I think Colin Castleton ends up moving into the roster. I still believe the Lakers get a big man, whether it's via trade or it's in free agency, you know, a Valanchunas or an Andre Drummond. I do don't think that they're going to go, okay, well, we got Colin Cast and we're good, right? The one kind of, like, question would be if Jackson Hayes 
opts back in, do they give Colin Castleton a roster spot or do they kind of give him another year and go, okay, like, unfortunately, Hayes opted in. If we can find a trade for him, then we'll trade him. Otherwise, you know, you're gonna have to ride you're gonna have to ride it out another year in the G League and then we'll we'll bring you in. But at some point you gotta commit to Colin Caston. He's either ready or he's not. If he's not ready, unfortunately, as much as I like him and think that he could be a talent in this league, you gotta cut him and you gotta move on and you gotta find somebody that you can grow and develop because of his age. Right? If he was twenty, you know, twenty one still or twenty two still, I'd be like, sure, right? Like Yo, keep him. Let him let him develop another year or two and see where you're at. Right? But again, just like I was talking about with Benson, I just think at some point you you got to the 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 long development, right? Eventually, you're going to have to kind of push it or shove it, right? At some point it's like, okay, enough is enough. So I was looking up uh yeah, so he's 24. Right. So again, if he, he was two, three years younger, I'm talking about Colin Caston. If he was two or three years younger, right, then I think you could you could ride it out. But now he's 24. He's going to be 25. Um, like now's kind of the time, right? Like you you know develop him another year or two, and now he's 26, 27. To me, it's just like get it done. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Uh, do you like? The two prospects that the Lakers brought in on two way do not. Um, I'm excited for Summer League. I'm like very excited for Summer League. We're going to see like, you know, what can Connect do? What can Bronny do? What does Colin Caston look like, right? Jalen Hitchfino. Oh, Jalen Hitchfino, I don't think is going to play Summer League. I think he's still rehabbing or whatever. But um, regardless, right? We got we got several guys. Maxwell Lewis is another guy I'm excited to see. Like, has he taken some strides? He's a guy that I'm really high on too. Um, but. Again, I you feel whatever your thoughts are. Love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. Helps me enjoy these types of videos. Truly appreciate it. Not subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.